Very special thanks to Cars of Somerset for providing the Mercedes in this video. Of course, as always, I've linked to their current stock down in the video description. And as you can tell from this review and the others that I've done with them for stuff like Maseratis and Nissan GTRs, they've got a fairly eclectic mix of performance vehicles. So I would recommend checking early and often to see what they've got in. And of course, they can find you a vehicle as well if you are in the Somerset area and keen to find maybe a rare to more uniquely specced performance car. When it comes to the world of super saloons, and especially somehow super wagons or estate cars as we often call them here in the UK, it's almost this great gauge of how extreme performance cars are becoming, because a few years ago, the kind of spec that these cars have would have been supercar levels. In, for instance, the later 80s and even earlier 90s, something with 500 horsepower would have been a bona fide supercar. The C63 AMG, a couple of decades later, is a full-size family estate which is available in lower forms with diesels and all-wheel drive and blue tech. And then you've got this one, which is just an absolute nutter of a car. Now, I've driven a great rival to this particular vehicle here on the channel as well, and that is, of course, the Audi RS4, which for that particular generation was only available as the wagon, which was a very curious choice from Audi. Not so here. You can have this one as the sedan, the estate, and even of course the coupe going all the way up to the very, very widely loved black edition. This one in its own way is super rare as well. And I don't just mean because it's a C63 AMG, that alone would already be cool and certainly make it a super saloon, or in the case of this one, a super wagon. This is even higher spec than the normal C63 because this is the performance pack. Now there are all different kinds of performance packs that they did for the pre-facelift, the post-facelift. There's the performance pack, the performance pack plus. But to give you a general idea, we're gonna be talking about some of the specifics of this car, but also just the facelifted AMG in general to give you an idea of the kind of space, the handling, the performance, what you can expect from it, whether or not it can genuinely be used as a combination of daily driver and extreme high performance car. Because of course that's the whole point of a vehicle like this. It's for the family man who doesn't want to give up the sports car lifestyle or at least is clinging on with his pinky finger and this car definitely allows you to do more than just dip your toe back in. If you floor that throttle you're going to be completely covered in the puddle that is the supercar world because this is crazy fast. Now it's already a quick car. It came around in 2007 in the initial C63 form. Incidentally, I actually like the look of that pre-facelift car more than this one, to be honest. The car with the more pronounced driving lights in the front bumper. This one though came around in 2011 and the entire production run, both pre and post facelift, covered 2007 all the way up to 2015. Now, as some of you will already know, the name of this car is technically more of a riff because it's actually not a 6.3 litre. The engine is a 6.2, as all 63 monikered Mercedes-Benz models actually are. And that particular engine already puts out about 457 horsepower. This one, though, with the performance pack, has 487. And it's not just, you know, an extra tuning chip. It's actually a pretty spicy upgrade because... This particular engine has the forged pistons from the SLS AMG, and that's straight from Mercedes. This is not an aftermarket kit. It has a lighter crank by three kilos. The connecting rods are improved. The ECU has been tweaked. It's a number of additions. The brakes are more powerful. It has a number of extra carbon bits here and there to add to the visuals. It's almost like a baby black edition. And it's not just a difference in looks and bragging rights, it actually is improved in terms of performance as well. Because for one thing, it has a limited slip diff, whereas the earlier C63s didn't. And you could argue that's one of the single most important things about the change in this car of all. Because with this kind of power and torque, 
well, you need to be able to get it down to the road, and the initial cars were kind of known for being just rampant. Pure, modern muscle cars, which spun up their wheels all the time. Now, this one isn't exactly sedate. In fact, it makes the Audi RS4 look kind of sensible in comparison, but it is more controlled, for instance, than just a rampant monster. With that being said, this is not a car for the cruiser-minded. This is not an older gents AMG, this is very much so a youthful car. In fact, in many ways, it reminds me much more of something like the AMG GTS, which I reviewed recently, rather than something like, for example, the E55, which I reviewed months and months ago from the late 90s. It's almost like comparing newer and older school Jaguar performance cars. They're just a completely different mindset and a totally different era. One is old money and one is new. Both are great in their own way, so you just have to weigh up the pros and cons and see which one is more your car. This is very much so a younger man's extreme family car, if you want to put it that way. There is so much performance on offer. The 0 to 60 is quoted on a normal C63 to be like 4.6, 4.7 seconds at most. In reality, you can get a little bit quicker than that. This one is even quicker again, and according to Car and Driver back in 2007, they even got the pre-facelift car to do 0-60 in 3.9. So again, this has some pretty amazing potential. One of my favorite things about this one though, and this actually really does harken back to the earlier 2000s black edition cars, such as the SLK 55 black, is that they actually increased the speed limiter, which they don't do all that often in Germany, so I love it when they actually do. I believe it technically still has one, but they've just raised it from 155 miles an hour to 175. So it's still not the ultimate potential. It's probably more like a 185, maybe 190 mile an hour car. But again, 175 is at least more fun to talk about than 155 stock. Now in terms of handling, I've got to admit, I would give the edge to the Audi. And I'm not going to get hugely into the comparison because I'm going to be doing a rivals match between those two cars to really pit them head to head. But suffice it to say that this is very much so the sledgehammer to the mallet that is the Audi. The Audi is not svelte by any stretch, it is a blunt object, but compared to the Mercedes, the Audi seems like a ballet dancer, and in comparison, that really speaks volumes to how over the top and how brutish this car is, which is one of the main reasons why I think an older gent driver even with previous experience of Merc AMGs, might find this car a little bit too much. It's not that it's too fast, per se, it's very harsh, the suspension feels very track focused, the, the handling, the brakes, everything is very sharp and very responsive, which is fantastic for when you're driving it hard, but it could be pretty taxing as a daily driver, so unless you're already somebody who's a fan of, you know, hardcore hot hatches like a Megane R26R, Ford Focus RS, maybe uh, a hardcore Super Saloon, for example, like a, an older AMG, a C55 or something, and then moving into this, well, if that's your existing pool of cars that you love and drive, then you'll probably love this one as well, because it very much so feels like it has that youthful hot hatch mentality that just happens to be stretched into a wagon. And in that way, it kind of harkens back to a very early review, in fact, which I did in this series for the C32 AMG, the much older generation C-Class with a, a much smaller but still really thumpy six-cylinder engine. That one, and I believe I even said in that review, felt also very much like a hot hatch. This one almost feels like a hot hatch with a muscle car's engine <laughs> dropped into it. It's very over the top, as I said. Now, in terms of whether or not you could use it every day, well, you certainly could, but there are certain drawbacks to doing so. Of course, the fuel economy is not going to be record-breaking by any stretch. They say it can do 15 to the gallon in the city, 33 on the highway. You are never going to get 33 on the highway in this thing, and an average of about 23. That doesn't sound too bad. That's almost like the equivalent sports or super sports car territory. In reality, from what I could find online, most owners tend to get more like 19 to the gallon out of it average, so that's more what you should be expecting, and that's not too surprising. It's a big engine, after all. In terms of practicality, it's definitely a step up, actually, over that C32. Not because of the engine or anything like that, but because the newer car is simply larger, so there's more headroom, more legroom, and I definitely appreciated that, because that older vehicle, although fun, 
was a little bit too snug for my taste if I'm honest. The steering wheel is a little bit too small, legroom is just about good enough for me but not the kind of thing that I would personally want to daily drive. This definitely has the space more than enough for a bigger driver. In terms of some of the common issues you should or could be looking out for, thankfully most of the issues that I found online in research, in Mercedes forums, etc., tended to be on the pre-facelift. So the slightly older, you know, 2007 kind of shape car. Those had some faulty cams, for instance, some bolt issues, I believe it was, with the engine. Mercedes actually did a recall, if I recall correctly, to fix that issue. This one doesn't seem to have had that. So, as I've said before, most people would recommend getting a facelifted vehicle if possible, because that's kind of the whole point. They iron out a lot of those issues, they update the car, and even though it's not going to make it perfect, it is an improvement, let's say. I was surprised, pleasantly in fact, to see that the general consensus from owners for these is that they're actually really good. They do have certain consumables which you are going to be changing a lot. Rear tyres for example, to the surprise of no one, of course you're going to be visiting the fuel station a whole lot. And you will also want to make a note of the oil levels in the engine. Keep an eye on that, make sure you change it regularly. And the engines are, from what I could tell, known for running pretty hot, especially when driven hard. Of course, any performance engine is going to get hot, but that seems to be a fairly notable thing with these engines, so keep an eye on that. This isn't the kind of car that you're going to find in a particularly immaculate state because it is designed to be driven hard but as i've said with a number of other vehicles be sure to look for stuff like wheel damage if it's been curbed for example look under the body see if there's any obvious damage from potholes but generally speaking it seems to have a pretty good history behind it and most of its owners who are the people who should know of course tend to give it fairly glowing reviews now, as I always like to say in these reviews, of course, if you were an owner before, or if you currently are, then by all means, drop your stories down below, maybe issues that you've had, things that you believe people should know, maybe even some of the stuff that I mentioned as well, because of course, if somebody watches this video and they are a potential buyer, that could certainly help them out as well. Now, in terms of the kind of prices you could or should be paying, it does vary a little bit, but not as much as you might expect. In fact, Sometimes, at least when I looked at the early part of 2021 when I'm putting out this video, some of the pre-facelift cars will occasionally fetch higher prices. So maybe it's not just me that likes the look of that older one, maybe some other people do as well, because the price ranges from about 21, 22,000 pounds currently up to about 30. And that's just for the wagon. I'm not talking about the coupe or the four door, that's just for the estate car version. As you'd expect from the engine, of course, as well as the aforementioned great amount of power, it puts out really good torque as well, about 440 pound feet. And the gearbox, incidentally, is a seven speed driving only the rear wheels. I would have personally loved to have seen an all wheel drive, like a formatic version of the C63 AMG. As far as I know, they didn't do one. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but that would have been pretty cool. It certainly would have been a more direct rival, in fact, for the Audi RS4, considering that that, I would say, is the main advantage which the Audi has. In terms of my overall verdict on the C63 performance pack, or otherwise, to be honest, I will definitely say that this is a car which you will either absolutely love or not necessarily hate, but you'll fairly quickly know it's not for you. You'll be one of those two types of people. It's not a car where I think there's much middle ground. It's so distinctly specific in its tone, its volume, its handling, especially the way it delivers its power. It felt very easy to spin up the rear wheels, very easy to drift, even in its estate car form. So of course in the UK, with the kind of weather that we have, that might be something that you want to bear in mind. If I was going to choose between this and the Audi, I've got to say as a Mercedes fan more than an Audi fan, I've got to go Audi probably. But again, I am going to get more into the reasons why in that rival showdown between the two cars. So if you want to check out that video, maybe you're not quite sold either way, then of course subscribe to the channel and stick around to watch that one. And if you want to check out my other reviews, maybe even for instance for that older C32 or maybe other Mercs as well of course that I've talked about, then click the playlist or the videos here on screen. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.